It's rare for something to be regarded as timeless. As history shows, there's usually something new, something better. In the yo-yoing community, what makes something better is generally subjective. But when it comes to a few qualities, yo-yos begin to lean into a realm of objective superiority, especially on the competitive stage. Long spin time, speed, power, stability, and a shape that won't hinder the performer's ability to do complex tricks. In the modern day, we have no shortage of yo-yos that fall well within this category, but there are a few yo-yos remembered that are like this, because there are a few truly timeless yo-yos. There is one, however, known especially well. One so far ahead of its time, so out of place, that nothing would come close to challenging it for years to come, and one still heralded today as a yo-yo that has no true substitute, as the yo-yo with no compromise the Yo-Yo Recreation Dropnare. Traveling back to the summer of 2013, the PlayStation 3 would be nearing the end of its life, Bioshock Infinite was still a new game, and the original iPhone 5 was still the latest and greatest from Apple. Focusing on the yo-yoing scene during the whole of 2013, there was plenty of excitement to go around. COYW and OneDrop had collaborated to release the Summit in the spring, a young up-and-comer named Gentry Stein had won nationals with his new signature yo-yo, and the Japanese company Yo-Yo Recreation was about to release something unlike anything anybody had seen before. Here's the thing, though. In 2013, while there were good yo-yos, it wasn't quite like how it is today. If you were to pick up a random yo-yo released back in 2013, very few would hold up to the yo-yos released in the modern day. Of course, there are exceptions like the Verse Newton yo-yo company Tie Walker, Yo-Yo Jam Dark Magic 2, and Yo-Yo Recreation Sleipnir, which are still at least decent performers. Not to mention the Shutter, which was also released in 2013. But the truth is, most other yo-yos released in 2013 would likely feel slow and sluggish, lack decent spin time, or to drastically oversimplify, simply wouldn't be able to handle modern tricks and combos. But like today, there were companies specifically known for being competition performers, with one in particular dominating in Japan. Yo-Yo Recreation Yo-Yo Recreation had a large selection of monometal yo-yos before 2013. Yo-yos like the Sleipnir, Overdrive, Fragment, Stargazer, and Messiah were all popular from this era, widely considered to give performers a competitive edge. Around May of 2013, there were leaks and teasers of Yo-Yo Recreation's upcoming unnamed release. The first guesses were around the name having a DR, specifically words like Dragon, Dreadnought V2, etc. Someone guessed early on that it would be named Dropnir, which compelled someone to later guess that it would have weight rings. This led to a host of people guessing whether or not the upcoming yo-yo would have a whole variety of different rim and body materials. Guesses ranged from a 6061 body and 7075 rims to a titanium body with stainless steel rims. Something to consider at the time, bimetals as a whole were considered novelties, neat little trinkets, but still overpriced novelties. People didn't look at them as yo-yos that could give you an edge due to their rims having higher moment of inertia. So these sorts of wild guesses, while in hindsight are wild and bizarre, at least make a little sense. These people were guessing how cool the yo-yo would be. They weren't looking at things practically like they would today. One more thing, some people believe the drop near to be the first bimetal ever released. This isn't true. The first was as early as 1998 with the H-Spin Handquake 1.4. Later notable bimetals released before the drop near would be the Word Beef and Yo-Yo Jam's Phenom and Next Level. But on June 6th, 2013, the entire scene would change. On June 6th, 2013, the drop near was released to the public, specifically during the Japanese National Championship. It sold out in 20 minutes. Despite this, it still wasn't clear what the drop near's body and rims consisted of. It wasn't until a modern face of the scene, Yo-Yo Factory Ben stepped forward and confirmed the rims to be stainless steel. From there, it was only a matter of time before the body was confirmed to be 7075 aluminum. In Japan, customers were enjoying their drop mirrors, fresh off of Yo-Yo Recreation's table. Surely, they felt justified in the steep 19,700 yen purchase. 
roughly 200 US dollars, once the drop near immediately proved itself on the competitive stage. Akatoshi Tokubuchi won Japanese nationals that year with the drop near. Across the Pacific, Americans were anxiously awaiting their drop nears. Once the drop nears finally landed in the hands of Americans, people immediately wanted to know how it played. Early descriptions described it as playing super light but having the stability and spin time of a much heavier yo-yo. On the bizarre side of describing the drop near, it was described to be similar to the Sturm Panzer Stealth Ogre. Because of the hype behind how the drop played, everybody wanted one. Not to mention, the drop near was the first bimetal from yo-yo recreation. As such, it was incredibly popular. Two more things would lead the drop near to be particularly difficult to get. Production was slow, and drops were few and far between, with numbers often being very limited. Finally, not a single American retailer could sell the drop near. Due to a patent owned by Yo-Yo Jam of outer ring material on a yo-yo, if an American retailer held and sold drop nears, they could be subject to a lawsuit. These things immediately shot the bar of hype for the drop near through the roof, with just two releases in June and subsequently July. Another odd comparison was to the Tie Walker, a titanium released by Versus Newton Yo-Yo Company. The drop near immediately cemented itself as a classic. The first release was an entirely raw release, and there wasn't an anodized run until October 23rd, 2013. The first anodized drop near was red with silver rims. An earlier run had a raw body with tempered rims, but I don't necessarily count that as an anodized run. However, something I need to say for the rest of the video, Unlike my peak video, I will not be going over every single colorway, especially because the majority of drop nears came in solids. Instead, I will cover notable models that would change the drop near in important ways or spin off models of the drop near. Differences between runs are largely unknown. Some drop nears weigh in as low as 62 grams, some as high as nearly 65 grams. Because of this, we're going to go with the drop near averaging between 63 and 63.5 grams. The first and most notable model of the drop near would be the Attuned drop near, released on April 16th, 2014. The Attuned drop near had an increased gap width from 4.3mm to 4.4mm to better suit Akitoshu Tokubuchi. Yoyo Recreation either announced or released the Triad on May 3rd, 2014, which was a hybrid version of the drop near. Soon, on May 9th, 2014, Yoyo Recreation changed their logo. Every drop near released after the logo change had their gap widths changed to be the same gap width as the attuned drop near. People actually nicknamed the black drop near with the wider gap width Bob. This is not a bit, this is real. In June of 2017, Yo-Yo Recreation would release the Palm drop near. The final commercial release of THE drop near was in June 2018, for the 5 year anniversary of the drop near. After that, the only thing left in the drop near lineage is the overdrive drop near, but I'll discuss that later in the video. The drop near saw a boom of use, both in and outside competition. But it immediately became well known for its use in competition. The yo-yo saw mass adoption outside of sponsored players, and yo-yo recreations players in particular mostly opted to use the drop near. As soon as it was released, as mentioned before, Akitoshi Tokubuchi would win Japan Nationals. His performance was flashy, with large body movements, and altogether flowed rather well. There were some moments of speed, but as a whole, the performance more or less showed just how stable and long spinning the drop near was. Winning a contest in a region as competitive as Japan is nothing to sneeze at. However, if you ask me, while it was a great performance, it didn't showcase everything the drop near could handle in a performance. A year later, in 2014, Iori Yamaki would have a much more broad performance, showcasing tech, speed, and flashy behind-the-back tricks. Iori would take third that year, shooting straight up from his 15th place finish the year before. He also showcased the drop near's 4A capabilities. Granted, if you wanted a performance that showcased the drop near's pure ability for speed, you need to look at one performer, notorious for his speed with a yo-yo. In 2015, Jakub de Kahn not only won the European Championship, but he also placed 16th in finals at Worlds. At both competitions, Jakub showed exactly what the drop near was strongest at. The main event of these performances was the speed Jakub could push into the drop near, with Jakub's Worlds performance being a legendary showcase of the drop near's acceleration. Yeah. 
That same year, Iori would place first at Asia Pacific. Iori would then go on to claim third place at Worlds, with an iconic performance to Shock 1's Laser Beam. An intense, fast-paced performance with which showcased the strongest and best the Dropnir could bring to the table in the hands of the right player. There were few mistakes. In two years, the raw competitive power the Dropnir brought to the table had conquered Japan, Asia Pacific, and Europe. The Dropnir would never be used to take worlds. Had it not been for a young Japanese teenager and a guy from Colorado, perhaps the Dropnir could have taken the world as well. Of course, this would require you to ignore one key detail. At such a high level of play, it's about having the right player, not the right yo-yo. The Dropnir is a world-class yo-yo, there is no doubt. But eventually, players began to favor other yo-yos, and the Dropnir began to get overshadowed. But not without proving that bimetals could give an objective upper hand to the performers. Over the years, after the drop near came and changed the game, other companies began to catch up. There would be a wave of yo-yos with the drop near's classic characteristics. A V or light W-shaped bimetal with the weight rings put on the outermost rims. Soon, these yo-yos would fall under a new subcategory as competition bimetals. For a moment, consider this. The drop near was so revolutionary and changed the game in such a major way that it served as the foundation for an entire subcategory of the modern yo-yo. However, something new will eventually come. Whether or not the new things that came are any better is entirely up to interpretation. To many people in the modern day, there are yo-yos that are simply better than the drop near, most famous of which are the Hummingbird and Flashback. These days, the accessibility, price, and design of these yo-yos are often just considered better than what the drop near can offer. The flashback, in particular, was specifically mentioned as being just better than the drop near by a designer friend of mine, and the hummingbird was described as being very drop near-like in a video made by Brandon Vu. Because of this, the hummingbird is most often heralded as the quote-unquote best yo-yo that fits the niche of modern drop near. Something else to consider is that the drop near was very often described as feeling uncomfortable in the hand. So, CLYW made the Wildfire. The Wildfire has the classic competition look and design, but CLYW took extra care in making sure the yo-yo was comfortable to hold in the hand. With the hype behind the drop near, it's a shocker that yo-yo recreation wouldn't ever step up to make a TIS version of the yo-yo. So, RSO made the Doombot. Sure, other companies made competition-oriented TIS yo-yos before the Doombot, see the Luftwerk Fulvia, but, like, the Doombot is just cooler. Plus, the Doombot was directly inspired by the drop near itself. Please note, the Doombot has brass rims, not steel. Certain companies would even collaborate to maximize just how far and how extreme you could go with the competition by metal. Mark 1 yo-yos and OP yo-yos collaborated to create the Converge. The Converge is a monster of a yo-yo at 46mm wide with a 58mm diameter. The yo-yo itself weighs in at 62.5 grams, 40 of which reside entirely in the steel rims. It basically looks like a bigger, meaner drop near. Of course, yo-yo recreation themselves would want to give it another shot. In March of 2019, they released the Overdrive Drop Near, a signature of Ryota Ogi. Unfortunately, the Overdrive Drop Near would be criticized. Many saw it as Yo-Yo Recreation simply not letting the Drop Near go. In a way, they saw it as Yo-Yo Recreation allowing themselves to live in the shadow of the Drop Near, as if Yo-Yo Recreation had peaked with the Drop Near. However, the Overdrive Drop Near is still Yo-Yo Recreation's take on trying to push the Drop Near even further. And even if some felt disappointed by the Overdrive drop near, the fact is, it's still a great yo-yo. With so many new and interesting options, the drop near has become overshadowed. Nowadays, the drop near is a collector's item. You want to try it to see what the hype's about. You want to own one just to say, I own a drop near. You want to own one to compare it to the new kings. But many out there stand steadfast with the drop near. To this day, people will still swear that the drop near was the pinnacle 
of competitive bimetals. Many reviewers will even compare the bimetals they review to the Dropnir. After eight years and many modern takes on what the Dropnir brought to the table. Perhaps this means we haven't progressed that much, that the Dropnir potentially hit the ceiling of modern yo-yo design too early. Or maybe people have simply moved on, and they've grown to prefer the newer options. Either way, there's no denying the truth. At the time of the Dropnir's release, there was simply nothing like it. At a time when bimetals were dismissed as novelties, the Dropnir came in and legitimized them. The Dropnir was the spark that lit the yo-yoing world on fire. <laughs>